this is a Christmas card that was in evidence. Hmm. And it's supposedly signed by Peggy and David Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you forge that? Did you well, make that well, up? Why don't you ask them whether it's forged? I mean, they would know. They sent that to me at some point. Ask David whether it's forged. He's still alive. He's 98 years old, and he will probably answer your question whether it's forged. He had studied the Rockefeller family. He knew the Rockefeller family tree. This is a person who's very intelligent, who would spend all of his time in libraries across America studying, learning America. You know, he would always say that, uh, you know, he's a poor relation of the Rockefellers. He said he had a crazy sister who was locked up in an uh, insane asylum, uh, that his parents were dead, and that he'd been raised by nannies and, in, you know, and tutors. And so he sort of, that sort of gave him a cover story for not knowing certain things about American culture. I've been so insulated. Like he told me he never tasted a hamburger or Coca-Cola, never eaten in a restaurant. I, uh, I, I go for simple things, as you can see. I um, like everything extremely well-worn and well-stitched. <laughs> so uh, I'm more interested in keeping things, in maintaining things that are old. It's more of a, an interest to me than buying something new every year. I think a lot of people, you know, have an image of what a Rockefeller would be. And he fit that image, and people were attracted to that, you know, never carrying money, never wanting to eat in a public restaurant or stay in a public hotel, only private clubs would do, you know, having one special cookie, the Nantucket, that he would only eat. He would only eat a special sandwich with the, with the crust cut off because this is what his, you know, his family had taught him to do, belonging to all of these exclusive clubs across the eastern seaboard where he took his meals and where he would sleep. I was at his house up in Cornish, New Hampshire, and uh, I mentioned that I had a tax problem. The IRS was going to take a couple thousand dollars out of my account for uh, late taxes. And he said, oh, well, is it it's federal taxes? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, well, he pulled a piece of paper out of his jacket, wrote down a number, and he said, this is George Bush's phone number. Je it, uh, it's not the White House switchboard. This is his private line. You call him, and he'll solve it for you. I mean, it was so bold, so brazen, and so brilliant. But I never checked on it. You know, I wasn't going to dial the pres Hey, President Bush, just checking. Clark Rockefeller <laughs> said I should call, you know. So he kind of knew nobody would call his bluff on. Well, people who called his bluff probably didn't last in his life, you know.